Hello everyone. Today I am going to explain you all what is OAuth 2. How does it works? It is an authorization framework that enables the application to get the limited access to user accounts on an HTTP service such as Facebook, GitHub, and LinkedIn. It authorizes the third-party applications to access the user accounts. Also, it provides a authorization flows for web desktop and mobile devices basically the OAuth 2 is defined by four rules one is the resource owner client authorization server and then resource server so these are the four rules we have to follow in the OAuth 2 resource owner Resource owner is a user who authorizes an application to access their account. For example, there is an application allows login via social media networks. So I am the user. I am trying to login into that application through Facebook, GitHub or LinkedIn. So the user is a resource owner here. The application access to the user's account is limited to the scope of the authorization granted. While you trying to sign in into the application, to access the user details is limited is based on the scope of the authorization granted. So whenever you trying to sign in into the application through social media networks, that those social media networks should provide the access that access is represents here the scope. Next one, client. Client is an application. It is an application that wants to access the user accounts. For example, you developed an application and then your application is allowing the users to sign in through social media network. So the your application is a client. It must be authorized by the user. The authorization must be validated by the API. Next one, authorization and resource server. Basically, this authorization server and resource server is an API. The authorization server verifies the identity of the user, then issues the access tokens to the application. So here the authorization server represents you have to provide the username, password, client ID and client secret. So these are the things you have to provide to the authorization server. Once those credentials are valid, then authorization will provide you the access token and refresh token to access the other service, I mean other server APIs like resource server APIs. The resource server hosts the protected user accounts. Once you get the token from the authorization server, you have to send the token to the resource server to access the user account details. This is the abstract protocol flow. So look at here, the first one, application. It is a client. It's sending an authorization request to the user. So user must authorize the application so the second step once the authorization is grant then the client will send the request to the authorization server hey authorization server the authorization has been granted by the user give me the access token so authorization server will give you the access token to the client so after receiving the access token the client should send the access token to the resource server so resource server should validate the access token once the token is being valid, then the resource server will send you the protected resources to the client. Next one, application registration. Here, before using OAuth 2 with your application, you must register your application with this service. This is done through a registration form in the developer or API portion of the services website. For example, we will take the Facebook. There is a developers.facebook.com portion. I mean, the site is there. 
so you have to register your application into the developers.facebook.com okay in that site if you register your application then you can access the o or two of the facebook to your application so while registering your application into the o or two you must provide the application name application website redirect URL or the callback URL so basically here the redirect URL is where the service will redirect the user after they authorize or deny your application and therefore the ports of your application that will handle the authorization codes or access token so I will give you a simple example in the Facebook how should I mean how we should register our application so I will give you the example in Facebook so this is the developers.facebook.com site go to the developers.facebook.com and click my apps and then click add new app so you have to register your application so here I am just giving test app okay and then this is the contact email ID and then create app ID this is called the application registration so Facebook asking to complete the security check I am not a robot I submit her and then the app will be created in the Facebook so look at here the test app has been created okay and then we will go for the client ID and client secret client ID and client secret once your application is registered the service will issue a client credentials in the form of client identifier and client secret the client identifier represents the client ID the client ID is a publicly exposed string that used by the service API to identify the application the client secret is used to authenticate the identity of the application to the service API when the application requests to access the user accounts and it should be kept private between the application and the API so we registered our application in the Facebook now the Facebook will provide as the client ID and client secret I will show you where you can get the client ID and client secret from the Facebook after you created the application come to the dashboard page and then click settings of the Facebook login so the page will be redirected to the next page client o or two settings so here you have to enable the client who are login web or login and then everything and then here the valid redirect URI here you have to provide your valid redirect URI so once the application I mean once the user has been verified the application or denied the application after that where the request should go so here you have to provide the redirect URI and then in the dashboard page you can get the client ID and client secret hope not in the dashboard in the settings page okay in the settings page go to the basic tab you can see the app ID and app secret here okay for that app secret I need to provide my password So look at here, I can able to see the app secret and app ID. So every application, not only Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, GitHub. So you must register your application into the social media networks. And then all media networks will provide you the client ID and client secret. So here in the Facebook, it represents the app ID and app secret. And also you have to provide the redirect URL where the application should redirect once the authorization I mean once the authentication port has been completed okay authorization grant so basically OR2 defines the following four grant types each grant type has been used for different use cases one is the authorization code it is used with server-side applications implicit used for mobile apps or web applications applications that runs on the user's device the web applications 
resource owner password credential it is used with trusted applications such as those owned by the service itself next one client credentials used with applications api access let's we go through one by one the first one is authorization code this is an authorization code flow so look at here the application client sends the user authorization request to the auth server service api also the user should authorize the application once the user authorize the application the authorization code has been sent to the client once the code has received in the client side then the code has been sent to the auth server once again to get the access token request so auth server should validate the code is valid or not once the authorization code has been valid then it should returns the access token grant to the application client okay in this authorization code flow look at here this is the url the first step we seen right application client should send the user authorization request to the auth server api so basically it will go to the as a url so look at here oauth.example.com v1 oauth authorize for that url you need to provide the response type as a code and then the client id and then the redirect URI. Okay, so this is the URL you have to send to the authorization server from the client to access your application by using OR2 by using authorization code. And then the scope. The scope is it's like a read permissions. So once you receive the code by using this authorization by using the access token what are the profiles you can access or what is the limited access you will get only the limited access you can't do all the things all the things in the server side you will get only the limited access that is represents as the scope read write like that okay and then the implicit grant type implicit grant type is mostly used for the mobile applications so look at here the application client will send the user authorization request to the auth server and then the user should authorize the application once the user authorize the application the token the access token will be sent to the redirected uri here the redirect uri should retain the token and send the token to the extract script that script should extract the token from the url and it pass it to the application it should pass it to the client for example once you receive the access token in the to the redirect uri okay uh, the redirect uri contains that token so here the in the web browser the javascript script code should be run to extract the read, uh, token from the redirect uri once you get the redirect uri sorry the uh, token from the redirect uri that token you have to pass it to the application so this is the flow of implicit grant type here how we can go for the implicit authorization link here you have to send the authorization the same url o or two or trace here the response type is code previously we seen the response type is code but here the response type is token and then the client id redirect uri and then the scope so this is the way of you have to send the implicit authorization and then next one resource owner password credentials for this resource owner password credentials is represents basically you have to send the username and password the grant type should be the password okay so look at here this resource owner password credentials how the OAuth url looks like it should be a token not an authorized 
and then for this token url you will need to send the grant type as a password username password and then the client id okay this is the resource owner password credentials and then the client credentials for this client credentials the url is also like a token ends with token for this you have to send the grant type as client credentials so basically this client credential type of oauth is used by the own service itself client id client secret you have to send okay thank you for watching this video please subscribe my youtube channel like my videos and share my videos thank you very much